Are you spying on us, Joker? No, ma'am. Just knew you were on the ship and figured I'd pass the message on. The captain said to meet him at Flux, that club down in the wards. You should probably go meet with him. Oh, and we didn't see the captain in the meeting. Maybe we should avoid Liara for a while. Uh, yeah, that wasn't... We were in a public space, okay? I don't know what you were thinking, Shepard. That was not... <laughs> that was not appropriate. Not that even if it was in a private space, that would be appropriate, given your relationship with... You being the boss of the ship, and everybody else being your lackey. Uh, Garrus Tully. Equalizing interior pressure with exterior atmosphere. Logged. The commanding officer is ashore. Exo Presley has the deck. Now we're forced to revisit. Well, I mean... We have been going all over the place, so this might be like um, a small downtime just to rest up a little bit. Even though we don't really want it. It's not like we can go back in anyway, right? They won't even let me travel around the galaxy elsewhere for fun. Whoa. Sorry, Commander. The Normandy's locked down. Ambassador Udina gave the order. Why did you teleport here? Sorry, Commander. The Normandy's locked mm. down. Ambassador Udina gave the order. Now Presley, Joker, everybody else, <laughs> they really can't even get off the ship. Okay, meeting the captain at... Flux? He may be able to help you off the Citadel. Yeah, between Anderson and Udina, I guess Anderson was always the one who was a bit more on the same channel as me. Want to read a little bit? Military Jargon Systems Alliance. Ashore. When a ship's crew leaves a vessel, they are ashore. Normally used regarding planets, it can be used to refer to boarding a space station. Away. When a ship releases the equipment tethering it to a space station or surface dock, it is away. Aye aye. The proper way to acknowledge an order. If told to attack, the correct response is aye aye, sir. If asked, are you proud to be a marine? The correct response is yes, sir. Oh, really? Is that true? <laughs> ASAP. As soon as possible. Belay. Stop. Cease. Bridge. The navigation center of a spacecraft where the steering is done. Captain's mast. Non-judicial disciplinary proceedings by unit commanders. CIC. Combat information center. Command center of a spacecraft. CSE is filled with sensor displays to make sense of the chaos of combat. DC damage control. The containment and repair of damage to a spacecraft. ECM electronic countermeasures. Used to avoid enemy sensors, from passive emissions masking to active jamming. EVA. Extravehicular activity. Time spent in a pressure suit outside of a vehicle, spacecraft, or station. Like when we walk around outside of the Mako. Flank. The flank is a side of a military formation. Since the soldiers are facing elsewhere, the enemy that can attack on the flank can often turn it or roll it up. FNG, freaking new guys. A derisive term for inexperienced personnel. Ground side, surface side of a planet. Helmsman, crew member who pilots a spacecraft. Joker. Ladder, Ladar. Light amplified detection and ranging. An active sensor that bounces lasers off an object to determine its bearing and distance. Ladar has sufficient resolution that the data can be reconstructed into an image. It's kind of like a light-based ultrasound. Shore party. Spacecraft crew sent ashore on official business. Or if you're grounded. Silent running. An old submariner's term used aboard the Normandy to denote when stealth systems are active. Sit rep. Situation report. An evaluation of the current military situation. Spacer. Someone who spent most of their life in space. Me, I guess? I was born on Earth? But, um... Akuz, Akuz I guess, is in space. XO, Executive Officer, Second in Command. Responsible for admin and personnel matters. What I used to be, I think, before when Anderson still was the captain. Military Ranks. The Alliance uses a modified version of the ranking system that has been used for hundreds of years. Soldiers are classified into rank and file enlisted personnel, experienced non-commissioned officers, NCOs, and specially trained officers. The divide between naval personnel and ground forces, Marines, is small. Ground units are a specialized branch of the fleet, just as fighter squadrons are. The unity of command is imposed by the futility of fighting without control of orbit. Without the navy, any army is useless. The marines, as a matter of pride, maintain some of their traditional rank titles. For example, marines have privates and corporals. 
instead of servicemen, in a sending order of responsibility. Servicemen third class or private second class, servicemen second class or private first class, servicemen first class or corporal. NCOs, service chief, gunnery chief, operations chief. I believe Ashley is a gunnery chief. And then Caden was a um, lieutenant, although what level lieutenant? I'm not sure. Second, first, staff, lieutenant commander, staff commander. Uh, I'm captain? Or no, I'm commander, right? So am I staff commander? Captain Major, Rear Admiral, General, Admiral, Fleet Admiral. Spectre's not even really in here because it's not really part of the military. N7. The Alliance Military Vocational Code System classifies the career path of all serving personnel. The MVC consists of one letter and one number. A soldier's MVC indicates proficiency, not rank. The letter notes career path. The number indicates level of experience, as indicated by service record, technical scores, and commendations. All 26 letters are used, and numbers run from 1 to 7. N is a letter code for Special Forces Personnel. So I'm the best in that. Special Forces Personnel, 7. Oh, I don't remember reading this one before. Timeline, 2069. But it wasn't lit up, though. Oh, it's roughly just saying... Oh! Commander Shepard, born in 2154. I was born two years before... Oh! Wasn't Caden from Singapore or something? Yeah, and then... I think he was born in Singapore or like Canada somewhere? That's when biotics started being discovered, I guess, and then first contact war. Humans establish embassy on Citadel. Actually, things were moving at lightning speed if you look at it like this. Years are often measured in hundreds in centuries here, but we're moving at a pretty breakneck pace. The Thresher Mall thing. What happened in a coups? 2177. So I was born 21... 54, which means when the Thresher Maw thing happened, I was only 23. My god. Current date, 2183, which does put me at 29? 29 as a Spectre? Isn't that actually, like, freakishly young? 29 for any military position I feel like is mega young. You seem to be attracting unwanted attention, Tally. Several passerbys were staring at you. Many think less of Quarians for traveling in the flotilla and for creating the Geth. They see us as scavengers, little better than thieves. It is natural for people to dislike rootless wanderers. If Quarians would just settle another homeworld, you would not run into such concerns. What? Uh, Garrus, do you have a suggestion for a home world that the Quarians should just settle in? <laughs> Sometimes the stuff that comes out of Garrus' mouth, I'm just like, what are you even talking about? He, I feel like he has a very strong cultural bias. Like, he feels like, oh, you know, Turians, we've got to be right all the time. Because we have such discipline and whatever. Speaking of Turians, hey, Wreck Officer, it's been a while. Hello, Commander. Show me what you've got. I'll open the rare stocks for you, Commander. Enjoy. X! Hey, that's new, isn't it? I'm pretty sure the one that I bought from the guy on the Normandy... It was a 7, right? Sniper rifle, shotgun, assault rifle... Pistol. Yeah, right? Uh, let me check. Right, right. They're all level 7. Okay, so I guess I can get an upgrade here. Hello, Commander. Show me what you've got. Thank you, thank you. Ooh, these things are actually kind of pricey, but it's not like I've been doing anything with my money anyway. Hey, yeah, now I can actually pretend I'm not that rich. I mean, <laughs> as soon as I sell the rest of the stuff, though. Oh, you've got different copies here, too. Of my old stuff. But my guy back on the Normandy didn't have the level 10 stuff. Do you have better armor? Medium armor? I think this is the one I'm wearing right now already. Scorpion 7. 
You know, I actually kind of wonder if it's even possible for my teammates to equip Spectre stuff. I wonder. Yeah! Great. I love to see all those greens across the board. Beautiful. Can we check? Garrus, for example. Um. Can you equip it? It's, uh, it's actually... It would be better. You can! Even though you're not a Spectre. Oh. I guess that's just like the company. Kind of like normally, but it's the Spectre company. Hmm. Well, if you can, then I don't see why you shouldn't just have all of my Spectre stuff. Maybe I'll save a little bit for Tally too. Don't give Garrus everything. Is it always better than what they're using though? I didn't actually... Well, this is better. Better than everything? Yeah. Oh, this one... The heat sink capacity is a little bit lower, but I think it'll be worth it. Try it out, try it out. And then maybe what I can do is I can even buy the copies Hello, here. Commander. Show me what you got. Because there's more, right? Yeah. Just buy it for whoever wants it back on the Normandy when we talk to them. Oh, look at my money draining away. That's crazy. Maybe I'll sell some of my stuff and get it back? I've got so much of this crap. Uh, the money's not going back as quickly as I'd like it to. But it's coming back. Because uh, the stuff I'm selling is pretty garbage, that's why. <laughs> Basic rounds level 1. I want to keep the Anti-Thorians though, just in case. You never know, right? Naginata. So this is, uh, this is worth a lot. Oh, somebody was using this. Oh, sure. Sure, I just gotta make sure that you're not gonna be, you know, blowing up my screen later with pop-ups again about how I don't have enough space. Just sell all of this crap. It would be nice if we can get back to 99999 again, but it's not actually... It's not actually a requirement. It just makes me feel nice, that's all. And maybe it would feel better without it being at 999 because you can actually see how your rewards for the missions are, so maybe I'll leave it like that. But I still gotta make room for future stuff, you know? So I still gotta sell some of this stuff. Okay. I didn't check my armor yet. What was my armor? Predator 8. No, so Scorpion 7 was what they were selling. Okay. I think we're alright. Thank you. Thank you, Wreck Officer. We wanna go to Captain Anderson at the Flux. Um... Can we go out by here? Do we want to check out the Citadel again? We've been here so many times already, I'm kind of like, eh. Alliance officials report that a Geth incursion into the Armstrong Cluster has been repulsed, with the Geth suffering heavy casualties. In the event of future Geth activity, the Alliance plans to maintain a strong security presence in the area. That's a little bit too defensive. We gotta be more proactive. Hitting them at Ilos, you know? Council, come on, listen. If we play defensively, we'll never get the upper hand. We're always lagging a few steps behind right now. Hey, Commander Shepard. Good to see you again. Anything you need? I don't believe so. I have to go. Right. You're probably real busy. Well, see you around, Commander. See you. A few of my people have visited here on their pilgrimage, but their descriptions of the wards hardly do them justice. If you feel lucky, we should visit the casino over in Flux. <laughs> I don't know about that. More gambling? I don't get the feeling I'm pretty popular with Dorian anymore. Excuse me! You're the Spectre, right? Charles Saracino. Commander Shepard. It is an honor to speak with you. You obviously wanted to speak to me. 
I'm Charles Saraceno of the Terra Firma Party. With Armistice Day coming soon, we're making our voices heard by the alien appeasers on the Presidium. Can I count on your support in the next election? Probably not, but I'll hear you out. You're marking the end of the first contact war with a protest. As we have every year for the last 26 years. The war taught humanity a lesson that some would forget. If we don't stand up for ourselves, no one else will. Oh, you're one of those pro-human things. Kind of like that gang that we ran into. The gang that was, uh, apparently I ran in that gang when I was little. I thought the lesson of the First Contact War was that there's other life in the galaxy and they have opinions too. Perhaps so, Commander. But if aliens feel free to express their opinions at gunpoint, why shouldn't we? What happened at the mass relay was a misunderstanding. If you saw a child about to touch a gun, wouldn't you stop them? <laughs> I'd pull them away, yes. I wouldn't shoot them dead. A lot of people on our crew are not the greatest talkers, Garrus. <laughs> Uh, you have a point, but I don't think using a kid, a child, to describe humans is the best way to do it. Mmm... We don't really know how the circumstances happen fully, right? Because if the humans were already armed when the Turians found them, then I feel like it's kind of natural for the Turians to want to hit them too. But at that point, like, humans had never come into contact with aliens before. Whereas Turians know that a bunch of other species exist. The council was already a thing, so... Naturally, humans would be much more scared. Well, okay, I can kind of see the reasoning behind that. Like, yeah, why Why did you kill humans? Why did you not just take their gun away? What are you running for? I'm seeking one of the five spacer seats in Parliament. They have certain Baroque conditions for a citizen to be able to vote for them. You have to spend more than six months a year in space, but you can't have stayed in any one settled system for more than a month. You do spend most of your time in space, Commander. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I don't know Terra Firma's platform. What do you stand for? Our core value is that Earth must stand firm against alien influences. Politically, culturally, and in the worst case, militarily. But many of your subordinates make this a point of race, not politics. Excuse me, I don't believe human politics are any of your business. <laughs> Turian space borders yours. Of course we're concerned about your leadership. Stop. You just happened to be talking about the first contact war with the Turian right next to me, too. Enough, both of you. Very well, Commander. My apologies. I'm not really interested in using my Spectre position to politically influence anybody to vote any sort of way. Uh, but I don't, I don't think we should be alone. It's obvious we can't do this alone. The, the galaxy is too big. Look at how far the Batarians are getting. Actually, I don't really know how far they're getting without the Council. Sorry, I believe we need to work peacefully with other races. We've heard that before in human history. Well-meaning naivete leads to declarations of peace in our time. We can't allow anything like Shan Shi to happen again. I don't suppose I could convince you to issue a public statement of support for my candidacy. The support of the first human specter would be invaluable. Hmm. The occupation of Shan Shi couldn't happen again. We weren't even sure there were aliens to garrison against back then. It's still a powerful symbol, Commander. Shan Shi is the only human territory ever occupied by an alien species. Why, that's a pretty good sign that we want to work together, right? Because it's the only place that's ever been occupied, because in the beginning, nobody knew about humans yet. And now that people do know about humans, they're not coming to invade you. Anyway, this is not... no. It's inappropriate for an active duty officer to publicly comment on politics. Of course. I apologize for making the request. Thank you for your time, Commander. Remember Terra Firma on Election Day, because Terra Firma remembers you. No blood for aliens! Earth first! It was so recent. Less than 30 years ago. Go it alone! I have to work the crowd, Commander. Maybe we can do lunch sometime? If you want to go it alone, I don't feel like you should be on the Citadel at all, because the Citadel is a congregation of all the species. 
It's a symbol that we all want to work together. Anybody who sets foot here is basically saying, yeah, we want to work together. Isn't that true? Anyways, though, if you want to keep campaigning, feel free. But just don't count on me to try to get support for you. That's all. Hey, I guess there is new stuff happening. Maybe I should be looking around a bit. Oh. Pardon me, soldier. Could I take a moment of your time? Soldier, I've got a major situation, and I need help from somebody with humanity's interests at heart. What kind of situation are we talking about? Of course, right to business. That's why humanity has the best damn fleet in the galaxy. My name is Elias Keeler. I'm an Alliance negotiator. We've got a big session coming up with the Solarians. You wouldn't believe what's riding on this. I'm fighting for humanity on this one, just like you are. Okay, cool. I understand, it's important, so what do you need? Well, in order to do my best for humanity, I need the best resources on the market. There's a mental stimulant that increases alertness and cognitive function. It's legal, but restricted. I've purchased the monthly limit, and I need more from the medbay. This sounds fishy. What exactly is this stimulant? Oh, I don't know the medical terms, but it increases mental capacity, short-term recall, that sort of thing. It helps me stay focused, and it keeps me sharp. Nothing gets by me when I'm on it. If you know the monthly limits, why'd you go over them? The negotiations were supposed to be last week, but the Solarians stalled it, probably deliberately. If I don't get the stimulant, I'll be a wreck. My assistant will take over, and that would be a disaster. Why? You should put some trust in your assistant. Didn't you train him? My assistant wants to bend over backwards for the Citadel races. He wants to show them we're reasonable. No race will respect us until we show them who's in charge. That's what it took with the Turians. Yeah, forget my assistant. <laughs> Why do you guys always bring up the Turians when I have a Turian right next to me? Hmm, we have a lot of very, like, pro-human people here. Why is this deal so important? The Solarians want to set up long-term trade agreements. There are billions of credits at stake. If I don't get the drug, my assistant will take over and mess up the whole deal. It would be a disaster. You should put some trust in your assistant. Didn't you yep. train him? My assistant wants to bend. No race will respect us until we show them who's in charge. That's what it took with the Turians. Yeah, forget my assistant. There's two primary positions that I see that people take here. Number one, humans should defend and rely on themselves, which is the same as the guy outside. And the second one is we should all work together to get further because working together, team, uh, what's, what's that saying? Teamwork makes the dream work, yeah! But at the same time, it's really difficult because we can only ever have one position as humans. Even among humans, we're different races, different languages, different cultures, but on the intergalactic platform, humans is just this one thing. And you can't really be like, okay, well, I'm a human, but I don't view things the same way as my human representative. You don't really get to say that. But anyway, in terms of this drug problem, <laughs> Uh... Keeler, you've got a problem. You need to get treatment. It might look that way from the outside, but this is just a one-time slip-up. All the top negotiators are on stimulants close to the legal limit. It's the way the game is played. Hmm... I don't know, man. I don't see all the top negotiators soliciting help to go over the legal limit, Keeler. Maybe you're right. I've been trying to keep humanity strong, and maybe I've pushed myself too hard. I'll tell you what, this will be the last time I use the stimulant. After this deal is finished, I'll get treatment. Oh yeah, he's definitely addicted. Yeah, like, it's not that the drug is illegal, it's restricted, it's limited, but you've gone over the limit. Nobody else is going over the limit. You need help. No trade negotiation is worth ruining your life for. Let it go and get help. You don't understand! Humanity needs me, and I need that stimulant. <laughs> Without it, I'll... I... I don't know anymore. I get so tired when I run out of the stimulant. I, I just need one more boost. There's no shame in having a problem, but you have to get treatment. You're you're right. Uh, I'll go tell my assistant. I shouldn't be working like this. I, I'll I'll get help. I'm just sorry it came to this. No worries, man. I hope you get help and you get better. I know we all want humanity's interests at heart, but. Don't wreck yourself over it, okay? If you're not well, there's somebody else ready to take your role for you. Not in like a taking your gerb kind of way, okay? In a, I'm, I'm here to help you out, that kind of way. 
Hi. Hey, uh, Doran. Time to do some dancing again. You guys like it? <laughs> They're kind of color coded together, Talia and Garrus. This music is interesting. I wonder if I can find a copy to bring back to the flotilla. You almost never see any keepers in this club. I guess they don't care what happens here. That or the music keeps them away. <laughs> no, you're wrong. They're right here. Uh, Jenna's still probably pretending to not know me. Hey there, welcome to Flex. Captain Anderson is over there. Wanna wanna gamble a little bit for good luck? Go big or go home. <laughs> I'm a little bit scared though because what if Doran gets mad at me? <laughs> he realizes I'm actually phony, and I've been cheating him this whole time. Uh, wh what am I trying to get to again? Twenty-one or twenty? Forgot already. <laughs> Keep going. Uh oh, I might go over. Um, go big or go home. <gasps> that was my first bust ever. Do it again. We gotta win, okay? This is. We gotta get back to n positive credits again because I have a gam. No, I mean, uh, we need to make sure that this is a net positive before we talk to Captain Anderson. Otherwise, it's bad luck. Come on, come on. 20! We're looking for 20, I think. Just short of blackjack? Oh, come on, man! Come on, man! Okay, so this would actually be better. Higher chance of us not going bust. Oh, no! No. No, okay, this is looking really bad. Are we finally back in the net positives? I believe so. Um, <clears throat> I, uh, spent a embarrassing amount of time here just now and that negative credits at one point it just kept going down and down and down but then i committed to it you know i gotta make it back to positive before talking to captain anderson because otherwise that's that's just bad luck right commander thanks again for all your help no worries hi i'm glad you came shepherd i heard what happened at the casinos or with the normandy the Normandy's been grounded. I know, I'm sorry. I wanted to warn you, but there was no way to get a message to you before you docked. I know you're pissed off right now, but you can't give up. They all think this is over, but we both know it's not. You have to go to Ilos. You have to stop Saren from using the conduit. I don't have a ship. There's only one ship that can get me into the Terminus systems undetected, and she's grounded. Citadel Controls locked out all the Normandy systems, but if we override the Ambassador's orders, we can get them to bring the Normandy back online. You can be in the Terminus systems before anyone even knows you're gone. If we steal the Normandy, you're the one left holding the bag. And if Saren finds the conduit, life as we know it is over. The Reapers will destroy us. Humans, Asari, everybody. You're the only one who can stop him, Shepard. So I'll do whatever it takes to get you on the Normandy and off this station. Oh, Captain Anderson really cares. But you know what? Udina is totally the kind of guy where even if it all turns out that we save the universe, we save the galaxy after stealing the Normandy and doing the right thing, when we come back, we're still gonna get punished. He will never let this go. Ever. Stealing the Normandy is mutiny. What if the crew won't help me? The Normandy's your ship now, Commander. Her crew will follow you to the ends of the galaxy. We both know that. Oh, do you guys want to sit, by the way? Garrus, Tally. What's the plan? I can unlock the Normandy from one of the consoles in the Citadel Control Center. You'll have a few minutes before anyone realizes what happens. That's a restricted area patrolled by armed guards. How are you going to get in? Leave that to me. Just make sure you're in the Normandy when the systems come back online. That sounds... Dude, they might shoot you down. You're gonna get yourself killed. There has to be another way. Ambassador Udina issued the lockdown order. If I can hack into the computer in his office, maybe I can override it. He won't just stand by while you use his computer. Hopefully he won't be there. If he is, I'll just have to think of something. The Ambassador won't forgive this, Captain. You'll be charged with treason, a capital offense. We don't have a lot of options. I break into the Ambassador's computer, 
or I take my chances with the patrols in Citadel Control. Captain... Oh, I wish you could come with us, because just leaving him here, he really might get killed, okay? Like, I... I think you should choose. I don't know what you're good at, and I don't want to... I don't want to be responsible for this. It's your call, Captain. I'll break into the Ambassador's office. He made this personal. You ready to get the hell off this station, Commander? Is this a point of no return? I still have some things to take care of. Come see me when you're ready to do this. I'll be right here waiting for you. If so, um, this might be my last chance to read the codex without, you know, randomly stopping in the middle of fighting or something. I think we have still quite a few more to get through, though. Oh, that's new. Terra Firma Party. Terra Firma is an alliance political party formed after the First Contact War. Its policy agenda is based on the principle that Earth must stand firm against alien influences. This covers a variety of legislation. Recent activities by Terra Firma include opposition to a law requiring high school alien language study, a proposal to increase tariffs on alien imports, and leading a popular movement to mark the First Contact War with a public holiday. Though founded by well-meaning individuals who fear the submersion of native human cultures under a wave of alien vogue, Terra Firma's agenda attracts many jingoists and xenophobes. It is a pretty easy line to blur, isn't it? Requiring learning alien languages, though? Is that really necessary? I might kind of agree with this, especially because we all use translation devices anyway. Although, okay, realistically, as someone who feels strongly about translation in general, there's no way some machine, some robot formula, algorithm, is ever gonna get translation perfectly right. But you know, for the sake of uh, suspension of disbelief and whatever, sure, translation devices. I can see where it comes from, but like, I again, like the line is so thin, I don't know where you would draw it. If you don't stand up for yourself, then no one's gonna stand up for you. The Salarian's not gonna worry about your profits or have your best interests at heart, so you do have to worry about yourself. Gagarin Station is the largest deep space station built by humanity, a Bernal Sphere design with a 500 meter diameter habitable area. It was constructed beyond Pluto, nearly 80 astronomical units, 12 billion kilometers, holy crap, from Sol. Moving crew and material to this location bankrupted most of the backers. Oh my freaking god. Then, then why do it? Why do it? Gagarin was placed at the inner edge of the heliopause, the point at which the solar wind can no longer push back the interstellar medium. It was built to test a number of faster-than-light drive principles that theoretically could only occur in interstellar space. The station was nicknamed Jump Zero, as it was intended to be the jumping-off point for humanity's expansion into the galaxy. Shortly after the station was completed, the Prothean ruins were discovered on Mars, rendering the entire effort moot. After struggling to make a profit for a decade, Gagarin was sold to the Systems Alliance in 2159 for a fraction of its construction costs. The Alliance refurbished it as a research and training center for the recently discovered biotic phenomenon. Oh, like an important strategic location overall, I guess. Lots of stuff here. Going beyond Pluto though, like, I mean, these days I feel like Pluto is the farthest of what we normally think of in our system, because, I mean, it is, right? 2169. The Biotic Acclimation and Training Program, Brain Camp, was shut down and Gagarin became a general research facility. Ah, is that related to the whole, uh, Caden killing his instructor thing? Its remote location and intentional isolation from the extranet makes it popular for dangerous research, particularly in the field of AI. Humanity's first stable AI, the Alliance-sponsored Eliza, achieved sapience at Gagarin in 2172. Today, Gagarin Station has a permanent population of approximately 9,000. A plan has been proposed to move it to the gravitationally stable Barris Center point between Pluto and the Charon Relay, allowing it to serve as a gateway facility between the Sol and Arcturus systems. The high cost of safely moving its mass has delayed this indefinitely. You can move it? I didn't even think that was possible. An AI named Eliza kind of reminds me of... Uh, Deus Ex... Human Revolution? Feels like a lot of AIs named Eliza. Okay, actually, we don't have that many left. We have one big heading left. But the ships and vehicles, to be honest, I think this is pretty dry. So maybe what I should do is... Oh my freaking god. Yeah, there's, there's a lot here. 
Mm, maybe let's try to like summarize these ones. Space combat, combat endurance. Oh my god. Okay, go, go, go. <laughs> let's see. Heat limits how long an intense ship to ship combat can be. Starships generate a lot of heat when they fire weapons, perform maneuvers, and use electronics on board. In combat, warships produce heat more quickly than they can disperse it. As heat builds up, the crewed spaces become increasingly uncomfortable. Before the heat reaches lethal levels, a ship must win a retreat by entering FTL. After an FTL run, the ship halts, shuts down non-essential systems, and activates the heat radiation gear. Combat endurance varies by ship design and by the location of the battle. Battles in the deep cold of interstellar space can go on for some time. Engagements close to a star, where it's hot, are brief. Since habitable worlds are usually close to a star, battles over them are frantic. Heat is a big decider in how long a battle can be. Space combat, general tactics. Shells lofted by surface navies crash back to Earth when their acceleration is overwhelmed by gravity and air resistance. In space, a projectile has unlimited range. It will keep moving until it hits something. No gravity. Practical gunnery range is determined by the velocity of the attacker's ordnance and the maneuverability of the target. Long-range combat happens between dreadnoughts, whose projectiles have high velocity, but they're not maneuverable. Short-range combat is between frigates, who have slow projectile velocities, but they're very maneuverable. Opposing dreadnoughts open with a main gun artillery duel at extreme ranges of tens of thousands of kilometers. Cautious admirals weaken the enemy with ranged fire and fighter strikes before committing to close action. Aggressive commanders advance, so cruisers and frigates can engage. At long range, not super long range, the main guns of cruisers become useful. Friendly interceptors engage enemy fighters until the attackers enter guardian fire range. Dreadnoughts fire from the rear, screened by smaller ships. Commanders must decide whether to commit to a general melee or retreat into FTL. At medium range, ships can use broadside guns. Fleets start intermingling and it becomes difficult to retreat. Only fighters and frigates enter close knife fight ranges of 10 or fewer kilometers, which is still pretty far for like non-ships, but close for ships. Fighters loose their disruptor torpedoes, bringing down a ship's kinetic barriers and allowing it to be sworn by frigates. Guardian lasers become viable, and they start killing each other. Basically, the general gist is, big ship fights far, small ship comes in and is maneuverable, so they... They start doing knife fight stuff. <laughs> starships, cruisers. Cruiser weight starships are the standard combat unit. The poor bloody infantry of most fleets. Frigates don't have the power or stamina to stand up to serious combat and we usually save up dreadnoughts and therefore cruisers come in handy because they are good at those things. Cruisers are used to perform patrols and they also lead small engagements alongside frigates such as in pirate suppression campaigns. Alliance cruisers are named after cities of the Earth. Oh. Dreadnoughts. Dreadnoughts are the ultimate arbiter of space warfare. Millions of tons of metal, ceramic, and polymer dedicated to the projection of firepower against an enemy vessel of like ability. No sane commander would face a dreadnought with anything less than another dreadnought. Big ass ships. 800 meters to one kilometer long. Each slug has a kinetic energy of 38 kilotons of TNT, three times the energy released by the fission weapon that destroyed Hiroshima. Holy crap. When used to bombard planets, some of this kinetic energy is lost due to atmospheric re-entry friction. As a rule of thumb, each Earth atmosphere of air pressure saps approximately 20% of a projectile's impact energy. The atmosphere is like a natural protection towards invading ships then. And again, it was, uh, we read about this in the Citadel stuff, it was some sort of like a treaty. Turians have the most dreadnoughts at 37, Asari have 21, Salarians have 16, Humanity has 6. With one more being made at Arcturus. Alliance battleships are named for Mountains of Earth. Everest class, Everest, Fuji, Elbrus. Kilimanjaro class, Kilimanjaro, Taishan, Shasta, Aconcagua. Things to remind us of our, our beginnings, everything from Earth. Fighters. Single pilot combat small craft. They're lightweight and they can be economically fitted with powerful element zero cores, which gives them great maneuverability. 
It used to be that starship battles last a long time because everyone has kinetic barrier shields and only the Dreadnought's gun could really pierce through the enemy ranks. But that changed when the mass disruptor torpedo was developed for the fighters, a short-range weapon that can penetrate these barriers and destroy people. Once these torpedo attacks have destroyed a enemy's barriers, other bigger ships, frigates and cruisers can go in and do even more damage. Interceptors are a type of fighter optimized to attack other fighters with no ability to damage starships. Interceptors are used to screen friendly units from incoming fighter attack. Every single starship has its own position and use. Frigate. I believe the Normandy is a frigate, right? Frigates are light escort and scouting vessels. They often have extensive guardian systems to provide anti-fighter screening for capital ships and carry a squad of marines for security and groundside duty. The drive systems let them achieve high FTL cruise speeds. They have large thrusters and light design mass, which allows them to be more maneuverable. In combat, the maneuverability and speed makes them immune to long-range fire, which is really, really slow from stuff like dreadnoughts. In the time it takes for the projectiles to reach them, the frigates are long gone. In fleet combat, frigates are organized into wolf pack flotillas of four to six. Wolf packs speed through enemy formations and hunt down vessels whose barriers have been taken down by fighter torpedoes. Alliance frigates are named for great battles in human history, the Normandy. Okay, heat management, starships heat management. <laughs> I feel like we've read so much about this already. This is a critical issue because if a ship can't deal with the heat, then the crew may get cooked. Oh my God. Radiation is the only way to shed heat in a vacuum. Civilian vessels use radiator panels. Warships use diffuse radiator arrays, DRA, ceramic strips along the exterior of the armored hull, which makes the ship seem striped to thermographic sensors. And because of that, these patterns can be unique to each ship depending on how it's designed. On older ships, these strips could become red or white hot because it's so damn hot. And it's like war paint, tiger stripes to psychologically impact pirates that they're fighting against. And for fighting purposes, warships also use high-efficiency droplet heat sinks. In a droplet system, tanks of liquid sodium and lithium absorb heat within the ship. The liquid is vented from spray nozzles near the bow. The bow is a thin sheet of millions of micrometer scale droplets. The droplets are caught at the stern and recycled into the system. A droplet system can sink 10 to 100 times as much heat as DRA strips. Mmm, that sounds pretty good. So either panels, strips, or the droplet system. Starship sensors. Light lag prevents sensing in real time at great distances. A ship firing its thrusters at the Charon relay can be easily detected from Earth, but 5 hours and 45 minutes after it occurs. Due to the light speed limit, defenders can't see enemies coming in until they have already arrived. Because there's FTL travel and communications, but no FTL sensors, frigates are crucial for scouting and picket duties. Passive sensors are for long range, while active sensors are for short range, higher quality targeting data. Passive sensors include visual, thermographic, and radio detectors that watch and listen for objects in space. Stuff like energy, heat, radiation, and the exhaust of the thrusters. Passive sensors can be used during FTL travel, but incoming data is significantly distorted by the effects of the mass effect envelope and Doppler shift. Active sensors are radars and high resolution Oh, LADARs, I guess, that's how you say it. Laser detection and ranging that emit a ping of energy and listen for return signals. And these are useless when a ship is moving at FTL speeds. Accurate, but short range. So during FTL, of course, you can't really use it. Thrusters. A mass effect drive core decreases the mass of a bubble of space time around a ship. This gives a ship the potential to move quickly, but doesn't apply any motive power. Ships use their sublight thrusters for motive power at FTL. There are several varieties of thrusters varying in performance versus economy. All ships have hydrogen oxygen reaction control thrusters for maneuvering. Ion drives use electrically accelerated charged particles as reaction mass. They're very efficient, but they're not that great, mainly for automated cargo barges. You can also use a fusion torch, which we have seen on the asteroid which vents the plasma of the ship's power plant. Fusion torches offer powerful acceleration, but it's very, very hot. But it's very cheap because it uses helium-3, skimmed from gas giants and deuterium extracted from seawater, 
or cometary bodies. In combat, ships need acceleration beyond what fusion torches can offer, and so they use thrusters injected with antiprotons into a reaction chamber filled with hydrogen. <laughs> okay. This gives a lot of motive power, but the drawback is fuel production because you can only make one antiproton particle at a time. It's very costly. The exhaust of fusion and antiproton drives is measured in millions of degrees Celsius. Any vessel caught behind them will melt like wax in a blowtorch. Combat drones, vehicles. Drones are small robots used to support and supplement organic soldiers on the battlefield. They don't have any AI, but follow programs that are fixed. Most use mass effect levitation to improve mobility. Oh, so that's how people are levitating, by using mass effect. All modern armies rely on veritable fleets of drones for routine soldiering, for patrols and all that, which reduces manpower needs and casualties in low intensity conflicts. But less advanced races, as well as cultures with less sensitivity to casualties, don't really use drones in their inventory. And they're not that great for open field battles because they don't have, they're not very armed or armored. In addition to combat drones, support drones are used to assist organic units in the field. Reconnaissance drones are small and stealthy. Electronic warfare drones supplement battlefield technicians, serving as jammers and ELINT, electronic intelligence gathering platforms. Military and civilian police use Dazzler drones, which have powerful strobe lights to disorient and subdue intruders using non-lethal force. Drone formations are officially referred to as wings. Common soldiers often refer to friendly formations as flocks and enemy formations as swarms. Hmm, I guess swarm does have a more antagonistic sounding, uh, what do you call it, connotation with it. A blade of armor. A warship's barriers reduce damage from solid objects but can't block guardian lasers or particle beams or other energy weapons. The inner layer of warship protection consists of a blade of armor plate designed to boil away when heated. The vaporized armor material scatters a dew beam, rendering it ineffectual. Oh wow. You hang these pieces of armor from inside the scaffolding that's built inside the interior pressure hull. And ships typically have multiple layers of these, I guess in case of it gets hit multiple times. But they're separated by some empty spaces, which they often use as cargo storage. It is not unknown for enlisted crew to build illicit alcohol distilleries in some obscure corner of the baffles, safe from prying eyes. <laughs> well, it gets lonely on these galaxy trips, you know? We miss home, and more importantly, we miss alcohol. Is alcohol illegal? Or like not allowed in the military? On the ship? I hope not. <laughs> Last one, disruptor torpedoes. Powered projectiles with warheads that create random and unstable mass effect fields when triggered. And that's the thing that's used by, I think it was mentioned earlier, fighters, right? Fighters use these to break through people's barriers so that the other bigger ships can do more damage. Yes. Torpedoes are the main anti-ship weapon used by fighters. Aha, I was paying attention. They're launched from point-blank range in ripple fire waves reminiscent of the ancient Calliope rocket artillery launchers, thus their popular nickname, Callies. By firing a whole bunch, at least a few will get through. Ooh, okay, that was, a, that was a lot of reading, and I apologize. I definitely didn't intend to read for like half an hour. But um, this is probably better than randomly getting interrupted while we're on Ilos or whatever, right? Because we're definitely going to Ilos right now, aren't we? You ready to get the hell off this station, Commander? Hell yeah. Let's do it. I'll take care of the lockdown. You get down to the Normandy and tell Joker to stand by. Okay. Back to the Normandy we go then. Thank you, Captain. I appreciate you putting yourself on the line like this. Could just fast travel back. Or try to hear maybe one or two more uh, elevator conversations before we get back. <laughs> Could do that. Captain Anderson putting himself on the line like this is something that probably Udina would never do. I have to work the crowd, Commander. Maybe we can do lunch sometime? Haha, <laughs> yeah, something like that. Captain Anderson... I wish we could still have him on the ship with us as our guiding lantern or something. He's jobless right now anyway. He's unemployed. He's free. Alliance officials have raided a dangerous cult controlled by a former Alliance officer, Major Kyle. 
Major Kyle surrendered and is now being treated for severe post-traumatic stress disorder. Well, that's... that's a good thing, I suppose. It's better than us having to kill him. I wonder what happened to his biotic followers, though. In light of the recent attack on Eden Prime, many colonial investors are pulling their support for future projects. Proponents of expanded human colonization insist that Eden Prime was an isolated case. Nevertheless, colonist enrollment has dropped sharply. Many colonial proposals are on hold until backers have some reassurance that human colonies will be adequately protected. Eden Prime is losing money, but Pharos isn't? What kind of world is this? All right, mechanic. Get out of here. It's my time to go. Thank you for looking after our ship. But, uh, you're not needed anymore. <laughs> she really is gone. Stand by, shore party. Decontamination in progress. Anderson? He's right here. What are you doing here? I didn't send- <clears throat> Oh! Let's go, Joker. Let's go. Get us out of here, Joker. Now. Do the traffic control of the Citadel. They should have a lot of, like, security in place and all that, but we're just... Oh my god, what if we get shot down halfway through? Or maybe we don't get shot down this time, but when we return, that would be even worse. Ha ha! We did it! We did it! Yay, uh, now what? Now what? Now we go to... Does anybody want to talk? No, I don't think so. Let's... let's go. <laughs> Get out of here, yes! Do we know how to go to Ilos? We do. Pangea Expanse. Refuge. Awesome work. Joker and everybody. Would every single person really follow me though? I kind of wonder. I feel like someone on my crew might be like, No, this is mutiny, blah 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 blah. Agatodon. Cool. Okay, very cool. <laughs> Zafe. I've done enough reading for now, leave me alone. Don't give me this planet crap. <laughs> Ilos. In the golden age of the Protheans, Ilos was a verdant world, dotted with the spires and arches of magnificent cities. Even casual observation shows this is no longer the case. Ilos has been devastated by means unknown, its entire surface changed to the color of rust. The atmosphere shows heightened levels of oxygen. Wildfires, presumably ignited by lightning strikes, can be seen burning on the dark side. This indicates that most, if not all, respirating animal life forms have died off. Surface gravity is a comfortable 1.17 standard G's. Hmm. Even the day and the, the hours and the surface temperature, they're fairly Earth-like. Shepard, may I speak with you? Of course. I was just thinking about you. I have been thinking about you too. And what we are about to face. I do not know what is going to happen on Ilos. I hope we will stop Saren, of course, but... Part of me fears we are already too late. There is something I must tell you. In case we fail. Go ahead. I'm listening. These could be our last moments together. Our last chance to show each other how we feel. I want this to be special. We don't have to do this. Not unless you're sure. I have never been more sure of anything in my life. Will you join with me, Shepard? Let our bodies and minds unite. Yeah! <coughs> I mean, I will. Just tell me what to do.
Finally, no interruptions. Oh my. I guess even the commander needs some downtime. By the goddess, that was incredible, Shepard. <laughs> I'll talk more about what I feel about the romance scenes at the end of this, but um... I'm, I'm glad, I'm glad we were ready and we... Just in case, you know, because we really don't know what's gonna happen. What if Saren kills us all and we have nothing to show for it? You were incredible. Five minutes ETA to the Mew Relay. I had better go. Duty calls. You would not want to keep Joker waiting. Shepard, whatever happens on Ilos, I just wanted to say... Thank you. For everything.